John McNee's readings contain adult themes and violence. They are not intended for all audiences. Listener discretion is advised. There was a commonality to the reviews of some of the Ballader's most satisfied customers. When they spoke of the experience, in trying to summarize what they had seen, heard, and felt in a way that was both comprehensible and palatable to potential visitors, a great many focused on the theme of nostalgia. More specifically, it was the nostalgia of terror. It was a common complaint among those who liked to be scared that they rarely ever were anymore. When they spoke of wanting to experience something that would truly frighten them again, they meant in the way that they had been frightened as children, when every sound and shadow in a darkened room promised the approach of unspeakable abominations. Growing up, imagination gave way to cynicism. Ignorance was traded in for world weariness. Fears remained, but they were the dull, suburban fears of illness, destitution, and death. The visceral terror of the unknown, of unseen things lurking under the bed or creeping out of the cupboard, became a fuzzy memory. Until a privileged few discovered the Balladar, attempts to rediscover such incapacitating terrors had proved disappointing at best. All the horrors of cinema, literature, news media, and the modern waking world couldn't compare with the monsters of childhood for inspiring sheer, unrelenting dread. It was that same, all-encompassing fear that Heinrich felt now, coursing through his veins as he stood in the garden, knowing he was awake and watching as an unfathomable creature dragged itself up from the earth. Its shoulders were first to break through, wide and thick like a bull's. To Heinrich it appeared at first like a big grey boulder shooting up through the soil, but then came the arms, scattering clumps of grass and dirt as they reached up for the sky, then slapped back down. The hands, large, calloused and five-fingered, dug in as grey muscles tensed, pushing down as the beast's back arched sucking its twisted flesh body out of the ground. It resembled a fat clump of hair pulled from a drain, a long serpent-like tail of knotted black fibers spiraling around each other, finishing in a neat sharp point. The soil around and beneath undulated with the twitching of more black weeds and Heinrich began to see points at which they still clung to the creature's arms and body. The beast was fruit of the weed. Heinrich recognized this in the moment before the shoulders jerked and tugged the heavy head from the earth like a ripe turnip. The face was a deformed, babyish caricature of his own, with bulging eyes like a pair of white goldfish bowls in a mask of wet, black clay. Its lipstick-painted lips peeled open to reveal a mouth of smiling daggers. Heinrich, it said. <laughs> 